Okay, welcome to today's tutorial. Um, so I was really just working on a lesson, just building something silly, and I figured, you know, maybe it might be useful for some folks on how they use actual pre-trained models in the browser, or how to use like libraries like Tesseract to essentially, you know, change images with text into actual text you can manipulate. So really what this application does is essentially it takes an image with text and that we can actually manipulate, and then it goes through a pre-trained model, which in our case, the pre-trained model we have is we can ask it questions and it basically gives us answer based on the uh, text that we gave it. So really what I mean by that is if I were to choose the file and I were to select this glob of text inside here and I were to upload it, really it's just a thing that I took from Wikipedia. Uh, so it takes a few seconds, but the basic idea, what it does under the hood is it uses Tesseract JS which is known as the OCR software. That stands for Optical Character Recognition, which is just a fancy way of saying that it takes images of text into actual text. And basically, um, it supports 100 languages. And so once we actually produce that text, we can actually use this inside something called TensorFlow.js, which is a way for us to use pre-trained models inside the browsers. Or you know, if you want to go deeper, you can actually create your own models with TensorFlow.js in the browser as well too. But we're not going to go that deep yet. But in our case, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the natural language question and answering model, which basically allows me to just ask it questions on a, a bunch of text that I gave it, and it just gives me answers to it. Um, and of course, that's not the most exciting thing. It's just something kind of silly. Uh, but of course, like these are pre-trained models. So if you're not interested in using this one, you have other models that you can use as well too, uh, like the text toxicity detection, for example. So if I were to go back anyway, and I want to ask it questions on this text. So let's say I say, uh, what year did Mozilla join ECMA? Well, if I ask it a question, it's going to give me back the answer 2005, right? Because if I look inside here, yes, Mozilla joined ECMA International and it says in 2005. So it gives me that answer. So let's see how we can build this. So what I'm going to do here is I got a little blank page and I got my little coding editor. And we are going to have some fun coding. Oh my God, I'm just struggling right now. Okay, so first things first, whenever we do build this, you're going to need to have some boilerplate. So we have our little boilerplate that we have set up for HTML. And then we're gonna have three types of scripts, right? The first script is our Tesseract min.js file. And then it's our two TensorFlow files, which is basically the TensorFlow JS library and the actual Q&A model that we're gonna be using to process that text. Uh, I'm going to link information on how you can access those CDNs. Um, and also, I'm just going to give you guys the code so you can copy and paste that as well, too. So uh, inside here, basically, what we're going to do is create some structure for HTML. right? So naturally, we're going to have our little input files and our button to upload and process, which you guys saw last time. So this is where we're going to upload our, our text, our image, and then we're going to upload and process this. And then we're also going to have our section where we're going to ask it some questions and it's gonna have a box to provide us that answer inside there. So this is our basic structure. So time to work on the real meat, which is the actual JavaScript implementation. You're gonna to need to have first two variables. The extracted text is basically the text that is gonna be the result after being processed by Tesseract. And then we have our model, which is gonna be that Q&A model that we just brought in from a script. So to initialize this, right, as you expected, the model is going to be set over to the Q&A. So we're going to load that model. And now we can basically use this variable to process information now. And then just for just structure for HTML, we need to add some event listeners um, to essentially track whenever the button is being clicked and whenever we click the ask button, whenever we have a question. So let's first focus on the handle upload. So for the handle upload, we're basically going to get the file from it. Uh, if there's no file, of course, we're not going to do anything. But if there is a file, right, we're going to create an image from it. And so brace yourself. This can get a little bit convoluted. Uh, but the basic idea is because this is going to take some time, we need to put this inside a promise. And so what this does is it produces something called a file reader. So we're going to basically use a file reader. And Inside here, we essentially have this thing called a callback function. So as another event listener that it's going to listen whenever information is loaded into the reader. So in our case, this is not going to be triggered yet. We're going to run this thing called reader read as data URL files. So we're going to take that file that we gave it and it's going to process that. And once it loads the information, then it's going to trigger this function inside here or this callback. 
And so what this does is it basically takes all that information of the file. It basically generates a new image, which in this case, it does a similar pattern where it basically does an onload as well. So it doesn't trigger this yet, but basically we take that image SRC and we set it to the file information. So we basically have an image that has uh, information about, uh, how do you say? Basically we have the image now with the source. And then basically once that thing is loaded, then we finally trigger this function, which basically says that, you know, the promise has been resolved and it returns back the image. Hopefully you were able to follow me with that. So once we have that set up, right, the next thing we're going to have is our little processing image just for some loading functionality. And then we're finally going to do the perform OCR, which is really two lines of code. So inside here, right, we basically take that Tesseract class that we got from the script and we use the method recognize. We provide the image, the language that we want, and this is just some logger just to show the progress of how it's uh, translating it. And then we just simply return back the text inside there, like so. And so what we do is we go back inside here, we basically take the the text that we generate from Tesseract and we put inside our text output and then we finally show the QA section. So the next uh, function we're going to work is the handle question. So in the handle question inside here, right, naturally, you know, we have our question inputs and values. If there's no questions, if there's no extracted text from Tesseract, we do nothing. But if there is, we basically take the answer output and we basically say that we're processing the question. And so this is when we start using the model, the QNN model or the question and answer model. And so basically that model, the QNN basically has a method called find answers. And so we provided our questions, which we have in the top and we provided our extracted text, which is from the Tesseract. And that basically gives us a response. You know, if there is actually something inside that array of answers, then we basically return the first item. If not, we just say no answer has been found. And that's really it. Because now all I have to do is whenever that web page is loaded, I just have to run the initialize function. And then um, just for it to look nicer, right? There's just a little bit of CSS to make it look good. And that's basically your application. So to kind of show you this, if I were to like now upload it and I went back to that original text again and I upload and process, you can see like what I meant by that logger section that basically log the information like so, it's basically logging the progress of how long it's taking. So you already seen how this works essentially, but yeah, this is the application. I'll upload the code and maybe I might actually do more tutorials over TensorFlow.js. But until then, talk to you guys later.